Smoking on a fastball, throwing hard Came in high and a little bit outside If it never gets dark, I'll never go inside Oh, she cuts her hair. <laughs> I have a lot of dead ends right now. Just chop them off. Did you cut both sides? No, I'm just gonna do one side because I kind of like the uneven look. Wait, to put it in the back of your hair. Let me see the. Well, one is more wet. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's good. No, no. I'm gonna cut the other side. The Dalai Lama, when asked what surprised him most about humanity, answered, man. Because he sacrifices his health in order to make money. Then he sacrifices money in order to recuperate his health. Then he is so anxious about the future that he does not enjoy the present. The result being, he doesn't live in the future or the present. He lives as if he's never going to die, and then dies having never really lived. I first heard this quote four years ago. At the time, I was in college studying for a degree that I didn't even want. My path had been laid out for me not with intention or purpose, but with fear of the unknown. I went to university because my parents wanted me to. I went to university because that's what all my friends did after high school, and because I didn't know what else to do. My parents taught me a certain vision of success. Go to college, get a degree, get a job, work hard, find a partner, get married, have kids, buy a house, work more, and save for retirement. What they envisioned is certainly a successful life path in many ways, but what my parents and I both failed to recognize was that success looks different for everyone, and it looked different for me. For me, success meant the freedom to travel, the freedom of creativity, finding a loving partner, being my own boss, prioritizing my mental and physical health, and helping others, helping animals. When I eventually realized this, it felt like an injustice to myself to continue on the path that my parents laid out for me. I dropped out of college, got a job at a therapy center, and started saving up for a van. My budget was $20,000 for the van and $10,000 for the build. I ended up buying a 2017 Ford Transit van for $27,000, and I've probably put about $15,000 into the build after living in it for over two years. To me, converting a van seemed congruent with the things I wanted to prioritize in my life. I knew that once I saved up enough money to buy the van, I wouldn't have to pay rent and I would be able to travel the country on a budget. When I travel, I find free campsites with the app iOverlander and my expenses come down to gas, food, and van maintenance. Living in a van is the most sustainable, budget-friendly way to travel that I have found once you pay for the initial cost of the van. I really like that style of parenting because it allows for a lot of 
freedom and like shaping who we want to be instead of like who mm -hmm. I love parents want us to be, you know. Mm -hmm. She's beautiful. a perfect parent. Like really no complaints. Mm. I look over and you're just staring at me while taking a word. I'm cold. Like this morning it was so hot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then clouds like went over the sun. Now it's like shivering. Mm -hmm. Colorado, baby. I love it. This is like my favorite type of bread. Weather. <laughs> <laughs> bread. You were reaching for the bread, no? No. I'm gonna get in. A little bit of a napkin. Mm. <laughs> bread? <laughs> You can see this, but there's an animal in the water, and he's going through the grass. I'm like scared, but yeah, he just did he disappear? It's like he went underwater just now. Oh, there, he's back up. Now he's. Do you see that? I built the van myself with the help of my dad. This was a really bonding experience for us since we had to work on problems together, listen and learn from each other. Building out the van was a form of reconnection for my family and I. In the past, we had fought a lot about our ideology, views of the world and visions for my future. When I told them I was going to drop out of college to travel full time, they were unsupportive and discouraging. My mom told me that if I got a van, I was going to be a homeless druggie on the streets but she didn't have the vision that I had. She didn't know that I was planning to build out a van with a sink, fridge, shower, cabinets, and drawers. And I think that when it comes to your dreams, it's best to ask your parents and the people around you for forgiveness, not permission. Now that I've been traveling in my van for a couple years, my parents are supportive and see that I'm living the life that I used to dream of. I have made money working intermittently on farms, selling my crystals and jewelry on my website, creating videos on YouTube, collaborating with sponsors, and getting commissions from my Amazon affiliate links. I have traveled all around the country to places like California, Colorado, Oregon, New Mexico, Arizona, Utah, Washington, Montana, and Idaho. I have traveled internationally to Indonesia, Thailand, Costa Rica, Panama, and soon I'll be going to Italy. What are we making tonight? We are making couscous and veggies. I have this couscous mix I got from King Supers and it's just roasted garlic and olive oil. 
it takes like five minutes to cook and it's so good so i'm just gonna cook that right now and then i'm gonna cut up a bunch of veggies and saute them and i have kale it'll just be like a veggie bowl mm -hmm. i'm obsessed with this right now there's a little herb packet in it <laughs> and i don't even know what herbs are in it but whatever it is it's good it's good <laughs> okay <laughs> Very yummy. We're gonna do a sweet onion, potato, sweet potato. We have broccoli. I'm gonna do green onion. I'm gonna do jalapeno. I'm gonna do bell pepper. And yes, I think that is exactly what I'm gonna do. I've never heard of olive hummus, but I feel like it's going to be good. It's very weird looking, but I think it'll be good. I mean, who knows? I'm grateful for that animal I saw even though I don't know what animal it was I felt his energy he scared me a little bit but I liked him he scared him. you he made two really loud noises really mm -hmm. almost like a massive rock being thrown in the water but it oh. wasn't it wasn't like a screeching noise like it's talking no and then I looked back and I was like what is that wow and um, I looked around and I was like, did somebody throw a rock? But there was nobody nearby. So then I got confused, but then I saw him. And I was scared, I was like, is he an, I don't know, we're in Colorado, this is stupid, but I literally was like, alligator? <laughs> or a boa constrictor, and I thought, he's gonna come at me. And he did come towards me. He came towards you? Yeah, and then Was I, he close? At one point he was, and I backed away because I got scared because I had no wow. clue what he was, and I still don't know, but I think he was an otter. I'm grateful for this too. I'm grateful for that walk we went on earlier, mm. and the deer that I saw. Good. I felt really connected to him, and it was a really nice moment. I'm grateful that we're here and we're spending time together. Mm -hmm. Lots of quality alone time. I love you. Um, so happy you're here. Thanks. I love you. Last year, I fell in love with a girl named Tori. We started dating and traveling together. 
We are long distance for the most part since she lives in Austin, Texas and I'm nomadic. It's been hard to be long distance. I don't always have reliable cell phone service to communicate when we are apart and it's painful to be in different places for several weeks on end. But when we do get to see each other, it feels like magic. We travel together, rock climb, go on hikes, jump in lakes, and cook together. She's planning to build a van in the next couple years now too. One of the biggest mistakes I made in my van build is not including a composting toilet. I had the idea that when I'm in nature, I'll just go to the restroom in the forest, and when I'm in cities, I can just use gas stations. I was wrong. Although I do enjoy going to the restroom in nature, there's not always enough coverage and privacy to feel comfortable, and going to the restroom in cities can be difficult, and sometimes just gross. To go number two in nature, I dig a six inch deep cat hole away from hiking trails and bodies of water go to the restroom in it, and cover it up with dirt and a big rock. I've gotten used to going to the restroom in nature, and as weird as it sounds, I do really enjoy it. It feels natural and normal as long as there's enough privacy. Cooking in my van is one of my biggest hobbies. I love putting good energy and intention into my cooking. I have an induction cooktop that I use in solar panels with 640 watts that make it all possible. Tori and I both live a vegan lifestyle, which is a philosophy that seeks to exclude as far as practical and possible all forms of exploitation of, and cruelty to, animals for food, clothing, or any other purpose. I've been vegan for about five years now and I feel happier, healthier, and more in line with my moral compass because of it. What are you thinking about right now? I don't think I was thinking of anything. But I have been looking at this white dog over there and he looks like he's having a lot of fun and he looks really happy and that makes me happy. <laughs> you can't see him. Hi. But another thing I'm thinking about is how there's a lot of flies here and they're really testing my patience. Mm -hmm. A lot. Okay, this is for Tori to see. Do you see all those flies? Open it! Okay, quickly, quickly. Oh my god, they're crazy. Yeah, because we're moving, you know, so they... Mm -mm. <laughs> mm -mm. You continue, on. Damn! They're all around you. I don't get it. Where did they even come from? I feel like they weren't here. Why us? Oh, I can't. It's brown. Stand down. It's black. Yellow back. If it's white. What's the other one? Mm. We found this ice patch that's streaming water and making this little river. So we're gonna jump in it. I have to jump in it because I lost a bet that the uh, meal that we had in Costa Rica was tofu instead of plantains. I thought it was plantains. I lost, so I have to jump in the water. But Sarah's I'm gonna in. do it with me. Just because I love you. She loves me and she's just a badass like that. And, like, and we're gonna get water. naked because we forgot yeah. our swimsuits. But. We didn't know this was gonna be here, so we're just gonna do it naked. I'm excited actually. I bought a Planet Fitness membership so that I could shower at all the gyms around the country. It's $20 a month that I can bring a free guest and even use the massage chairs. When I'm in nature, I use my outdoor shower and I find streams to dip in. Tori and I recently found this stream in Colorado. It was freezing cold and when we first got in, I could feel my body tense up in response to the cold, but I eventually surrendered and focused on my breath. And afterwards, I felt so clear-headed and refreshed. 
Regular cold water exposure can strengthen the body's immune system, reduce symptoms of anxiety and depression, and can quicken recovery time. I really enjoy showering in natural bodies of water, like streams, lakes, and rivers. Oh shit! <laughs> I almost lost it. I just went to the restroom in the forest and I found a bunch of mushrooms and I also found this very old can and some pieces of litter that I brought back. So I think that Tori and I should go check out the mushrooms again though because I found like three different types of mushrooms in, in this surrounding area. One is red and white and we looked it up in my book the other day. And then another one was kind of like an orange shape it, it was an interesting shape and then the one i found up there it looks like a porcini which i've eaten before and i found in washington but i'm not gonna gonna be eating it this time because <laughs> safety safety you don't want to die i don't want to die like chris mccandles did eating a mushroom i'm so down to eat wild mushrooms but i just have to be with somebody who knows what they're doing and if somebody could also eat it like a couple days before and test it out for me, that would be great too. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> but that's actually what I did last time. I made my, my friends were gonna eat it anyways and I was like, I'll like wait a couple days after you eat it and then I'll try. <laughs> you know the emoji of the mushroom? Yeah. It's like that. Yeah, but in real life, I've yeah. never seen one. <laughs> I, know, I, mean. I also love to spend my time in nature. Hiking, digging for crystals, meditating, reading, and foraging for edible plants and mushrooms. Tori and I found many beautiful mushrooms in Colorado, including the Amanita muscaria, or fly Amanita mushroom. This mushroom is vibrant red with yellow dots. Although it's classified as poisonous, reports of human deaths resulting from Amanita muscara are very rare. There are techniques like water draining that can be used to weaken the toxicity and can allow for safer consumption of the mushroom, but still, Tori and I didn't consume any of the mushrooms we found. And I've actually only consumed mushrooms once that I found in nature, when I was with friends who had more knowledge about identifying them. And they also ate it a day before I did. <laughs> I do have a book all about identifying mushrooms, but because some edible mushrooms look very similar to poisonous ones, I'm very cautious about consuming them. Most of the time, admiring them makes me just as happy. At this particular campsite, Tori and I were off-grid. Being off-grid for long periods of time is one of my favorite things about being in nature. It allows me to reconnect with myself, spend quality time with the people around me, and move with intention. I am always surprised with how much time I seem to gain when I don't have service to mindlessly scroll on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, or the internet. It also makes me aware of how addicted I am to these apps. The first couple days I always catch myself impulsively opening up my phone so I can go to the Instagram app, but without access to these apps my mental health always blooms. I keep a satellite phone so I can contact my family and let them know I'm safe when I'm off grid too. After over two years of living in a van, I really can't imagine living any other way. I feel like my best self when I'm traveling, meeting like-minded people, spending intentional time in nature, and disconnecting from my phone. Because I don't have to worry about paying rent every month, I can spend more time creating art, making jewelry, writing, reading, and making videos. I have more time to cultivate and excel in my hobbies like digging for crystals, rock climbing, yoga, meditating, hiking, painting, wire wrapping, learning the guitar, and cooking. And although I don't think everyone would love this lifestyle, I do believe that if everyone took elements of it and implemented it into their own lives, the world would be a much better place. An intentional, compassionate, and simple place. <laughs>